Welcome to Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Today we're talking about cardiovascular disease, the leading cause of death in women in this country. And here to give us some insight is New York City cardiologist, Dr. Mary Jane Farr. Thanks for joining us. Are you a smoker? Do you exercise? Are you overweight? By definition, a body mass index greater than 25. Do you have diabetes? Do you have pre-diabetes or glucose intolerance? Do you have a family history of coronary disease? Are you pre- or post-menopause? So there's all these things that need to be looked at to de determine what mm -hmm. is your risk. Controlling for those risk factors is lifelong. There are actually many people who will say, well, I don't have any of those things. And if you peel back and peel back, there's they something. Do. <laughs> they, they may be the marathon runner at 45, but when they were in college, they were smoking two and a half packs of cigarettes a day, something like that. Or they have a very abnormal lipid profile, mm -hmm. and they were totally unaware of it. Um, it, most importantly, they, they may have low HDL or mm -hmm. low good cholesterol where they've had very low LDL, the bad cholesterol, but they didn't appreciate that their low HDL was a significant risk factor. Mm. And if you had them, well, what would you do about right. it anyway? You'd exercise more, you'd maybe drink a little bit of red wine, or you'd be a little bit more mindful that you do actually have a sort of an inverse risk mm -hmm, factor. Mm -hmm. There just seems to be so much controversy in the field of cardiology. There are those cardiologists who believe that you need to get that LDL, that lousy cholesterol down way below 100. You need to use any drug you can, the statin, the combination. Then there are some who don't think that they're as I, I'm useful. in the first category. Okay. You've got to drive that LDL down. I mean, there are so many large, well done, big clinical trials looking at a variety of different people or different ethnicities to show that, that, uh, that driving that LDL down less than 100, and for some patients who have established coronary disease um, down to lower than 80, right. uh, treat to new targets is, is an essential component to controlling cardiovascular disease. And does it matter which statin? You know, no. You can go on and on about this one, that mm -hmm. one, or the other one, but really the goal is, you know, pick, pick Get the it down. one you can afford, drive it down. If it doesn't work, switch, drive it down, and get where you need to be. We hear, though, so much about how t symptoms of heart disease or heart attacks are oftentimes missed in women, how maybe women aren't getting as aggressively screened or treated as men are. Yeah. First of all, is there truth to that? And second of all, if there is, what do you, where do you think it comes from? Does it come from within the medical community or does it come from the population and the patient? Well, I think that at least as when we were uh, in medical school many years ago, we were taught that women really presented in a different way. And in fact, they do. For uh, women who present with uh, an acute coronary syndrome or a heart attack, they will often present with more subtle abdominal complaints, nausea, they don't feel well, they're dizzy, they're tired, where men mostly are, they present with classic the, chest pain right. syndrome, numbness of the left hand. So, But I think that that uh, mantra has been taught well enough to to residents over the last 15, 20 years. So it sounds like th within the field of cardiology, doctors are more on the lookout for Definitely. it, but are women? W do you think the word has gotten uh, out yeah, to women? I do. I think with internet access and, and all these television shows, I think people, I think women, you know, they really, really do recognize that they may have a more subtle presentation and are advocating for themselves a little bit more in terms of what are my risk factors? Do I have diabetes, doctor? What should I do about my blood pressure? Is this a sign or a symptom of a heart attack and, or, and also stroke, which is also a number right. one killer of women? So when we're talking about someone who has had a heart attack, let's mm -hmm. stick with the, the woman for now. Patient to patient, do they fare worse than a man with the same type of heart attack? Yeah, a little bit worse, I think. And, and, and it's not completely clear whether that's because the interventional approaches are um, uh, a little bit less successful in women or because the medication approaches that we take classic beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, aspirin, another antiplatelet agent, uh, Plavix there. In all of those clinical trials, there were more men studied than women, and do these all completely apply? But uh, I think probably there's an evening out of the treatment strategies, um, but they do do a little bit less well than men. There's been a lot in the media in the last year, two years, three years about children with the high incidence of obesity in children, we're starting to see almost the same type of picture in a child or a mm. teenager as we did in a 30, 40, or 50 year old. And the concern there is that will we start to see strokes, heart attacks yeah. in young adults? We're seeing these young people who have advanced heart disease and they have risk factors that they 
have developed over their entire lifetime, where you ask a patient who is obese with a body mass index of 35, and they're enormous, they've been like that since as far as, as long as they can remember. How long have you been overweight and heavy? For as long as I can remember. Right. You know, and, and their family, their mom and their dad have been heavy, and they have grown up in a household where everybody is overweight, the dietary you know, uh, lifestyle is terrible, uh, they've had early diabetes, right. probably undiagnosed, early hypertension, lifelong obesity, and you said by the time they're 30 years old, their heart's had it. So important, and so many things, obviously, we've just scratched the surface, but I want to thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you'll come back. We can talk about men more. Um, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Until next time, wishing you good health.